potential to reach the United States overnight. As ABC's Elizabeth Herr reports, the UN is responding with its own show of force. The United Nations holding an emergency meeting with the U.S. demanding global action in response to a global threat from North Korea. Make no mistake, North Korea's launch of an ICBM is a clear and sharp military escalation and the threat to all nations in the region and beyond. As Americans celebrated on July 4th, North Korea successfully launched a two-stage intercontinental ballistic missile that fired some 1,700 miles straight into the sky. But experts say had the North Koreans angled the trajectory for distance, not height, the missile could travel well over 4,000 miles, meaning it could reach the U.S. mainland. So when does this happen? A year, two years, maybe three. But we need to remember, we have consistently underestimated the progress of the North Korean program. The U.S. responded by performing joint military exercises with South Korea, firing a volley of short-range missiles into the waters off the coast of the Korean peninsula. President Trump so far blaming China for failing to restrain North Korea, tweeting, so much for China working with us. This as North Korean leader Kim Jong-un continues to taunt America, saying this was a package of gifts on Independence Day and the final step in creating a confident and powerful nuclear state that can strike anywhere on Earth. For now, North Korea is vowing no negotiations. And according to a top American commander in South Korea, the only thing keeping the U.S. from going to war with North Korea right now is self-restraint. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Coming up all new at 5.30, the tensions in North Korea hitting home for some Metro Detroiters are now sharing their biggest fears with us. Again, that's ahead at 5.30. Well, the search is still on for the person responsible for shooting and killing a man during a packed block party in Highland Park. Police say more than 300 people were hanging out near Midland and 3rd when shots were fired last night. That 30 year old man shot in the head right in front of some children. Well, we talked to someone who was at that party who says it was sad that the annual celebration turned deadly. Well, I just lived there like we, we should all come together instead of having to be having this violence against each other and all that, but it was a nice event and we're trying to do it every year. So I can't say much, it's just, it was just something shouldn't happen. It should never happen, I can just say that. Police say none of the witnesses are cooperating with this investigation. And a rollover crash in Westland left a woman in critical condition. Police say she was headed east on Ford Road this morning crossed into the westbound lanes near Central City Parkway. After she ran off the road, the SUV hit a tree and then flipped over. We're told the driver was ejected from that vehicle. She's identified as a 47 year old woman from Detroit. Westland police are trying to determine why she lost control of that vehicle. There's a push to help clear the air in Detroit with new regulations on petroleum coke, also known as pet coke. It's been a controversy since the company stored piles of it along the riverfront years ago, creating a cloud of dust. The new ordinance would require enclosed storage and air monitoring. Companies would also have to clean trucks and rail cars before entering the community and covering their cargo. Ultimate goal of this legislation is to improve air quality, to ensure that Detroiters have, are able to breathe clean air in their communities, and to, to really to clean up some of the past mistakes of industry in the past, working in partnership with industry to make sure that Detroiters continue to have jobs, but also that people are able to breathe clean air, and really recognizing that at a city moving forward, those must be at the fore both must be at the forefront of our conversation as we talk about development. Councilwoman Castaneda Lopez says a number of cities have already approved similar legislation in an effort to improve air quality. Dog deception, the warning from a local police department about puppy scams, how the culprits are getting you on the leash. Costly mistake, the Sterling Heights Fire Department making an example of this homeowner who's now dealing with $150,000 in damage. What firefighters say he did wrong. But first, officer ambushed, an ex-con taking aim on a New York City cop, why the commissioner is calling her death an assassination. Well, the NYPD commissioner says the officer shot to death early this morning was assassinated by an ex-con who had a grudge against police. 
Police say the officer was in the front seat of the cruiser when the killer walked up and fired one round through the passenger side window, hitting her in the head. She died in the hospital a few hours later. Police say the shooter, Alexander Bonds, then took off. Responding officers caught up with him less than a block away, killing him after a brief shootout. She was on duty, serving this city, protecting people, doing what she believed in and doing the job she loved. Authorities now looking for a motive. They're focusing on an 11 minute anti police rant. Bonds posted on Facebook last September complaining about his treatment in prison and about cops getting away with killing people. City of Chicago saw a huge spike in violence over the holiday weekend. Since Friday night, a staggering total of 102 people were shot with 14 killed. One of the latest shootings was in the city's Roseland neighborhood where two men were killed and two others were hurt. Police had been carrying out anti-violence raids over the holiday weekend, hoping to prevent any bloodshed. Well, President Trump will face the most crucial diplomatic test of his young presidency when he sits down with Russia's president Friday with investigations into his campaign ties with Russia and Russian interference in the 2016 election. Analysts say a lot could ride on that meeting. ABC's Maggie Ruley has the latest for us. It's a high stakes meeting between two of the world's biggest superpowers. On Friday, President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin are meeting face to face for the first time. This is the single highest profile meeting that President Trump has had with the world leader. The president tells reporters on his way out of town, we're going to do very well. Putin has a history of challenging U.S. presidents. As he left office, President Obama shut down Russian compounds in the U.S. and increased sanctions against the country in retaliation for Russian meddling in the 2016 election. A hacking the U.S. intelligence community blames completely on Putin and something President Trump continues to cast doubt on, making his relationship with Putin complicated. I would love to be able to get along with Russia. There's Vladimir Putin. Have you ever met the guy? A tough guy. I met him once. I have no relationship with Putin. I don't think I've ever met him. Putin even sent me a present. Beautiful present with a beautiful note. I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him. The White House is calling Friday's face-to-face -face a normal bilateral discussion. The idea that Donald Trump would show up in a meeting with Vladimir Putin and not say something about the election would be astounding. But the Russians have their own agenda. They're calling it a full-fledged seated meeting, one where Putin's likely to press the president on easing sanctions and on reinstating those diplomatic compounds. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Washington. In London, investigators say they found the last visible human remains following last month's devastating high-rise fire. So far, only 21 of at least 80 people killed in the fire at Grenfell Tower have been formally identified. Officials say they can't account for the people in 23 of the apartments. Now, work isn't over. Investigators will continue to spend seven days a week combing through that rubble. We're told the fire started in a fridge freezer. And firefighters in Sterling Heights are making an example of a homeowner who threw away used fireworks in the garbage can that caught fire in the trash and then caught the home and the garage on fire. This happened early this morning on Vera Court near 15 Mile Road. We're told the damage is estimated to be about $150,000. Mm -hmm. Expensive lesson there. Oh, All right, so for those of you who bought a Mega Millions ticket in Dearborn Heights, you may want to take a very close look at those numbers. Grab some sparklers. Okay, that's because Michigan Lottery officials say a ticket worth $1 million was sold at this Exxon gas station on Ford Road. The player matched five numbers in last night's drawing. Yeah, so if it's your ticket, you have one year to collect your prize. Mm, it'll take me one minute. minute. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe 30 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, half a yes, minute, yes. yes. So this uh, string of uh, glorious weather Beautiful. just uh, continues. Oh, it has been. For yeah, those yeah. with a short work week, yeah. it's been gorgeous. For those that had to come back today, I apologize because <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful blue sky out there. Just a few high clouds comfortable tonight too. low humidity, even with some of the bigger heat that's on the way. And there is going to be bigger heat tomorrow. Temperatures soaring well into the 80s, maybe even flirting with 90s.
90 tomorrow, but again, the humidity fairly in check. We start to notice the rising dew points by tomorrow night when we're tracking the chance for showers and storms in the forecast. And again, that'll be late Thursday. Temperatures right now, we're comfortable. We're in the low 80s, 82 degrees downtown, 80 right now in, 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 in Ann Arbor, 84 in Pontiac and Port Huron. You're also in the low 80s. We've had a light wind. It has been more or less an east to southeast breeze, so we tend to get that little push off the lake, keeping our eastern suburbs a little cooler, but still not a big discrepancy. Look at the dew points. We love to see dew points this low with the temperatures as high as they are. It just means the air is dry. It's more comfortable for you as those dew points rise well into the 60s. You start to feel a little sticky, feels a little tropical. Not the case tonight. Seeing some high cloudiness on the increase from the south, and that'll be typical. We have a system to the south, a cold front back to the west, and here are the winds right now, about 5 to 10 miles per hour light overnight as well. So the dry air will fight back the opportunity for these showers moving through Wisconsin into Illinois. It's going to come close, but I do think they'll break down as it runs into that dry, stable air right over the Great Lakes thanks to high pressure. High pressure is really our friend, been keeping us nice and dry. Beautiful outlook for the fourth holiday. Here is the cold front, though. This will swing through. It's slow to move, but as it closes in, we'll start to increase our chances for some of these showers and storms late tomorrow night. We're talking Thursday night going into Friday. So in the meantime, beautiful tonight, clear, comfortable, and then tomorrow morning starting with beautiful sunshine. So it's going to be clear. I do think as we work our way toward the late day hours, especially into the evening, we'll see a little more cloud cover becoming partly cloudy. This is 10, 11 o'clock. Here comes a few spotty showers. This may be what we call a first batch because by the afternoon, on Friday, we see a little bit of uh, these showers and storms bubbling back up for Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Those could pack a bit of a punch, maybe some heavy rain, certainly some lightning, some gusty winds. We'll have to keep an eye on that scenario unfolding for Friday afternoon. 64, the low tonight, a little milder, but still comfortable. 88, there it is, well into the 80s. That's our hot day of the week. And then low 80s on Friday with that chance for showers and storms early, then maybe later in the afternoon. And then upper 70s to around 80 for a pretty comfortable weekend and of course you can always stay on top of things one way to do it just a free seven app you can look at that interactive radar you can tune it down i certainly used it when i was away for the fourth it really is a nice tool to have and the best part is it's free just put it right on your mobile device all right thanks a lot hallie up next making it easier to find beer in michigan who's now able to sell you beer and wine thanks to some changes to state laws. Plus, how much did your last vacation cost you? The surprising number of people who go in debt for a getaway. Coming up, all new at six. All new tonight at six, a staggering number of suspensions for a local driver. What he had to say when we confronted him over the violations. It's all coming up on Action News at six. The race to corner the electric car market just got a major new contender. Yeah, and Volvo isn't just releasing one new electric car. Yeah, Joanne Purton joining us in the newsroom with today's Don't Waste Your Money Consumer Alert. Joe. All right, Glendon and Dave, that's right. The Swedish automaker says all of its cars will be hybrid or electric by 2019. This makes Volvo the first traditional car maker to do away with the internal combustion engine and make the shift to pure electric and hybrid. Volvo's president and chief executive said the decision was driven by growing demand for electric cars. Volvo says it will launch five fully electric cars in the next few years, which will put it in direct competition with Tesla. Well, recent state laws are making it easier for gas stations to sell beer and wine. The Michigan Liquor Control Commission granted nearly 600 new license approvals this year. Laws were changed last year on how far away the alcohol needed to be from the gas pumps from 50 feet to just five. It also lifted the requirement that it be located in a shopping center. All right, how did your, how much rather, did your last vacation cost you? Because according to a new survey, most people go into debt to pay for their trips. Financial planning firm LearnVest shows 74% of people go into debt to pay for a vacation. It says more than half of those people say they don't budget for their time away. It's a problem really, especially since a week-long vacation costs most people more than their monthly rent or mortgage. In fact, the survey shows on average, people spend 10% of their annual income on vacations. It says the best way to stretch your dollar is to start budgeting now. I know people don't love the budget word, the B word, but uh, it makes sense to do. Also makes you guys, I would say, returning home from your vacation a little bit less stressful if you have budgeted for it and don't get hit with huge bills. Yeah, you hate that idea, right? You come back and then you really pay for yeah. being away. You then busted you need your wallet, vacation. you busted your gut. Exactly. <laughs>
exactly. now it's time to just redo everything. Well, Joe, thank you so much. You're welcome. All new at 530. Tensions hitting home. The alarming events in North Korea impacting local communities. Tonight, they're sharing their biggest fears with Action News. Dog deception, the puppy scam targeting people here in Metro Detroit. What the culprits are doing to get people on the leash. Sidewalk showdown, the cost of curb appeal in Royal Oak. Residents on the hook for repairs. What the community is doing right now to fight the charges. Taking action for you. 7 Action News at 5.30 starts right now. New at 5.30, Metro Detroit's Korean community on edge after escalating tensions between North Korea and the U.S. Simon Shekhet live in Southfield where community leaders says military aggression by North Korea's leader has a specific goal. Simon. Glenda, Dave, 40,000 Korean Americans live right here in Metro Detroit and many think this could be some type of political stunt to gain international respect. They saw what happened to the Saddam Hussein and they are afraid of them. A longtime head of the Korean Chamber of Commerce, Tak Young Kim, is also running his own news agency, putting out a weekly paper. He says further threatening acts by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un are more about intimidating the U.S. into talks than actual danger, despite what it looks like. They want to talk, and we have to listen to them, what they are looking for. They want to engage with, with, with the United States to reopen the dialogue. Kim says he was still troubled to learn of a new missile test last Tuesday, utilizing longer range technology that could come closer to U.S. soil. With South Korean roots, he fears friends and loved ones back home could also be placed in harm's way, given that America and South Korea remain strong allies. North Korea is afraid of uh, South Korea and the U.S. alliance. We all hate the regime there, Kim Jong-un family and their, their followers, but think about the innocent people. Now, recently, the U.S. and South Korea engaged in a joint military exercise, but Kim does not believe that that will do much good. Glenda? So, Simon, what does Mr. Kim think the U.S. should do about this? Yeah, he had a lot of ideas, but the biggest one out of all of them was for our president and their leader to sit down in a room and talk things out. He says that has not happened, and until that does, we may see more of these kinds of stunts. All right, Simon, thanks so much for the update there. A 20-year-old accused of hitting and killing a woman known as the Flower Lady learned how long he will spend behind bars. Deontay Renfro was sentenced to 4 to 15 years in prison in connection with the death of 83-year-old Charlotte Kish. Last July, Renfro crashed into another car and then hit a pickup truck. That truck then hit and killed Kish, who was cleaning up the median and outer drive in Fenelon in Detroit. Renfro left the scene. He did turn himself in three days later. An Independence Day swim takes a tragic turn in Port Huron. Police say 38-year-old Kenneth Johnson drowned after taking a dip in the St. Clair River yesterday. Witnesses say he was yelling for help after waves from passing boats became too much for him. First responders found Johnson underwater shortly after their arrival, but by then it was too late. In Wyandotte, we are waiting for police to release the identity of a man who was hit by a train. It happened around midnight last night between Eureka and Oak near 9th Street. Police are not saying whether the man was walking or if he was in a car at the time of that accident. Well, Canton police are sending out a scam alert, and this time it involves people interested in buying puppies online. Action News reporter Kimberly Craig tells us how it's done and how you can protect your heart and your wallet. Their faces are adorable. Puppies like these multi poos up for sale. The only problem is they could be coming from puppy mills, disguising themselves as reputable breeders. Or sometimes it's just a scam and the dog you've fallen in love with doesn't exist. The Better Business Bureau says scammers simply troll the internet for adorable pics to reel you in. And you never get that puppy you already feel is family and you'll never see your cash again. They know that people are willing to pay um, to get that family member to their home. Uh, so when they keep asking for money, more money, people usually pay it. 
Canton police warning people about this puppy scam on their Facebook page today after four people were recently scammed out of hundreds, some thousands of dollars. One woman who wanted a shih tzu from a company she found online was bilked out of nearly $5,000. The consumer buying experts with the BBB say you should always visit the breeder and search for website warning signs like is the site even hosted in the country where the breeder claims to be located and pick up your puppy from the kennel. Do not rely on them to ship the little one to you and pay with a check or credit card because experts say it's a red flag if a breeder pressures you to pay by wire transfer or a prepaid debit card. Go to a reputable company that's local or that other people have worked with. Um, if you ever have to wire money or send money grams or money orders, um, it's probably a scam. And if you are looking for four-legged family members, don't forget to always check out your local shelters and rescues. In Canton, Kimberly Craig, 7 Action News. Happening now, people in Royal Oak are protesting the way the mayor and city commissioners have handled the sidewalk issues throughout that city. These are live pics from the demonstration at the corner of Washington and Mount Vernon. It appears a couple of double dozen people or so have gathered. Protesters say city leaders do not have the authority to force homeowners to pay for the installation of new sidewalks. The city, however, is defending the initiative, saying it will make the community more walkable and increase safety for pedestrians. We'll continue to follow that. Blood emergency, the urgent warning from the Red Cross that has them calling on all donors and why they say there's a significant shortage. Plus, we all know a thing or two about those long lines to get into games and concerts. Well, tonight, what Ticketmaster says they're doing to speed up the process. Coming up, all new at 6. Remember the puppy that was left for dead in a garbage can? We bring you an update on this remarkable recovery nearly two weeks after he was found and when he could be available for adoption. And a senior center goes up in flames over the weekend in Pontiac, leaving dozens of people displaced. The surprise today from their landlord and the deadline to find a new home. It's all coming up next on 7 Action News at 6. Sure hope you join us.